Hi, Dale Liars. Joe from Long Red, and today we're going to talk about how to enable the receiver or transceiver inside of a 6160RF keypad. Now we have a 6160RF mounted right here. It's a push button keypad. It has a full alphanumeric display, and it actually has a built in transceiver right inside of the unit. What this will allow you to do is interface as many wireless devices with your Vista system as the system can handle. We have a 21 IP mounted down here, and all Vista systems, they don't have any receivers or transceivers built into the board itself. So if you're installing a new one and you take it out of the box, you're going to notice that the board has no way of interfacing with any wireless devices as is. You have to install a receiver or a transceiver. Now, the 6160RF is the recommended device to install, as in most instances, it can be less expensive than the compatible transceiver, which is the same thing except without the keypad features. And it basically kills two birds with one stone because it gives you that alphanumeric keypad that you can use for programming on the system or just general system operation. And it also has the receiver built inside of it. So you don't have to install two devices, you can install one and be done with it. It connects right to the ECP bus, which are these four terminals right down here, like any other keypad, and it works great. As you can see, we do have a low system battery. I am aware of that, and that's because we have to actually reboot the system to get in to the programming on the keypad. This keypad has a setup menu that you access only by restarting the system 100%, turning it back on, and then pressing and holding 1 and 3 to get into programming. One thing to watch out about the 6160RF keypad though is when you're in programming, it's gonna quickly jump out of programming if you don't press a button. So if you did get into programming on it and you are starting to adjust some stuff and you have to sit and think about something and it jumps out of programming, you'll just need to redo the process to get back into programming and redo your changes. If it does jump out, it's not gonna save the menu that you had selected and you may just have to readjust stuff. So it's not the biggest deal in the world, but if you do see this happening, just be aware that's because you're waiting too long on one particular screen, it's timing out, and it's going back to the main menu. So now let's get into programming on the keypad. To do this, we have to fully turn the system off, turn it back on, and then press one and three on the keypad right after it turns on. And for this, I'm gonna leave our backup battery unplugged. I'm just gonna take the hot leg off, we don't need the battery plugged in to access the keypad. And if you do have a battery and you are doing this process and the, the panel's far away from the keypad, don't feel like you have to plug in the battery every time before running over to the keypad. You can just leave it unplugged just in case you have to restart the system again to do this process a second time. So I'm gonna go over to my power strip over here. And as you can see, the keypads down here are completely off, which means we are powered down. We have our tux and our VAM running off of a backup power supply, which is mounted over here. So those still have power. I'm gonna power our system back up. As you can see, we're coming online. The keypad's showing busy standby and then the version number of it. And I'm gonna press and hold one and three. There we go. The first menu we're going to get is con address. This is the actual address of the keypad. The 20, the 15P, and the 21 IP can have up to eight addresses, and they go from address 16 to address 23. And as you can see, we just backed out of programming. So the, that's one of the issues that you're going to want to watch out with this, is that if you take too long, it's going to go back to the main menu, and you'll have to restart the process. Now, the one and three is gonna work for about 50 seconds after you power the system up, so I should be able to get back in by pressing and holding. There we go. So to continue through, because this is correct, if it's on 16 and it's the only keypad on the system and it's working, you can just hit star. The next thing, here's your receiver. Our receiver is on. To toggle it on and off, we do zero or one. So if I want it to turn off, I'd hit zero. If I want to turn it on, I hit one. Star to continue. The receiver address on a 15, a 20, and a 21 IP, it's going to be 00. For high-level panels, it can change depending on how the programming is. And as you can see, we just backed out to the main menu because I took too long and I didn't hit a button. So I'm going to restart the system again. Come back up, press and hold 1 and 3. So con address, that's good, 16. 
star. Receiver, our receiver is on, so we're going to hit uh, star to continue. Our receiver address, 15, 20, 21 IP at 00, zero so that's correct. We're going to star. High security, most of the time you're going to leave this off. I would check with your security provider or check out the manual if you do want to use this feature as it's a little more advanced. If you do find that uh, key fobs or some devices are not working properly on your system, it may be because that feature is currently on. So you're just going to want to make sure that one's off. And as you can see, it backed out again. So I'm just going to jump back in. So star, receiver on, star, zero, zero, high security off. That's what we want. And then disable high security devices. We don't need to do this. This, again, has to go back to the previous menu. And again, it's really worth it to check with your security provider on how to set this up if it is something that you're even going to use. So I want to just try to get through the menu once without it backing out. Star, receivers on, star, receiver address zero, zero, star, high security mode off in most instances, star, and then disable high security devices. No is fine, you just star right through. After you get past that point, it's going to save your uh, programming changes, and the keypad should work fine, assuming you've entered the right information in. That's how to enable the receiver on a 6160 RF keypad. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to subscribe. If you want to be notified when we post future videos, hit the notification button. We'll send you an update when we do so. If you have any questions about a Vista system, 6160 RF keypad programming, or anything alarm related, Feel free to give us a call, 888-818-7728. You can also send an email to support at alarmgrid.com or head over to the website, www.alarmgrid.com. We hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.